I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Please rise, all but the family. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth. church anthem. I love that church of God.
in St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy, kingdom come. thy, kingdom come. thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debts. As we forgive our debts. And, debt and, debt and lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power and the, power and the glory. And the glory. Forever.
Come on, everyone say amen in this place. Thank you, Lord. The Lord shall surely come again. We're not here celebrating the end. We're celebrating the new beginning. And we believe that the Lord shall come again to receive his own. As we begin to journey through this wonderful homegoing service for this beautiful and dear sister and child of God, let us have a prayer of comfort coming from the grandson, Elder Aaron Carr. Father God, we thank you with tears in our eyes. We thank you. We celebrate the life of your child, the life of your daughter here. We thank you what you meant to, for what you've meant to her. We thank you for being a way out of no way. We thank you for being a shelter in her time of storm. God, we thank you for power and victory. God, we thank you for breaking all types of stereotypes over her life. God, we thank you for making her royalty. So as we are in celebration, I am not fooled or diluted to believe that people are comforted by this time. So Father God, give us strength now to accept your will in my grandmother's life. Give her the strength to come together if things were broken, if situations have arisen, if arguments have happened, God, give us the strength to be healed and comforted during this time. God, we're trusting in you, but we're bleeding at the same time. We have hope, but we're crying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give us the strength to believe that she's in the best care. Beyond the doctors at St. Barnabas and Clara Moss, but she's in the best care. Beyond the comfort of you and her loved ones, God, she's in the best care. She's now in the arms of you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We trust you, God. We believe you to give us healing and comfort during this season. God, I'm asking special comfort for my mother and my aunt right now. My uncle's in the name of Jesus. Her, her children. That we can all celebrate the fact that you did a good job. You ain't got to regret. You ain't got to feel remorseful. You did a good job. Each and every person that's here is, is a connection to Louise Howard. They, they, they prayed, they fasted, they mentioned their names at prayer service, mentioned their name during prayer services at jobs, at, at schools, at, at brotherhoods. God, we just thank you because you mean so much. You caused her to mean so much to so many people, God. But I personally thank you as a grandson. What you meant for the pillar of my life, and that is my grandmother here. So this is why it's a celebration family, because she planted seeds. Yes, she did. Yeah, yeah. She believed in Christ. Yes, she did. She was a worshiper despite of. Yes, she was. And so that's why we don't come here throwing stones, we're throwing confetti and celebrating the fact that grandma's going home. So God bless us now, comfort us now. The areas that's going to be voided because of her absence. Remind all of us as we move on in life that she existed for us for a purpose. She existed to mean something for us. So God, give us that message while we're crying, while we're bleeding, while we're struggling. God, give us the direction we should go and understand and realize we have a life to live. And she was an example of resilience. She was an example of love. She was an example of discipline. She was an example of someone who will fight for you. So now we just thank you for her life. We thank you for what she represented to all of us here. Comfort us now. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we all pray. Amen. To the bereaved 
family this morning that would include us all. To all the friends or well wishes that are here this morning, Church of God and Saints of Christ, to the senior bishop, Bishop Henson, to Evangelist Cook, the pastor of this dear child of God, to all the evangelists and elders. To all of our brothers and sisters who are assembled here this morning, I say it is good for us to be here. I say it is good for us to be here because it's moments like these that bring us together to share and to uphold one another, to share the good thoughts and memories of our dear sister, Grandma Louise. Amen. This morning, I, I'm encouraged because when I look back and think about the beautiful woman of God she was, yes, I just have to smile. Yeah. 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 Many times I can remember the moments of coming to New Jersey. Well, my mind goes back to the 80s when she used to be in the Passover choir. All right. And I could hear her beautiful voice as we marched up and down the aisles at the Passover. And as she was passing, she had a beautiful alto voice. But I, I want to talk about when New Jersey Temple would have their anniversaries. I would long to get that one song that they would be singing. And you could hear her bellowing out from the congregation in that strong alto voice. Oh, what a voice Grandma Louise had. You almost wanted to catch her after church and strike up something just so you could hear her sing. She had that kind of alto voice. Her daughter and her granddaughter, they they come close, but not they're not quite there yet. Yeah, they, 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 that, that voice that Grandma Louise had, it just mellowed, it just, it just soothed, it just, it just brought about a tightness to the harmony when she sang that voice. St. Louise, she was one of a kind. I was looking in the reading here in the obituary. It said she is a Georgia peach. Born in Atlanta, Georgia. I, that's all I read. That's all I needed to know. That's why she was so sweet. Some of us were born in all kind of other cities, North and Detroit, but she was born in Georgia. I ain't never heard of no North peach. I ain't never, I ain't never heard of it. I ain't never heard of no Detroit Lily or nothing. Georgia. That's all I read this morning, Sister Elder. And I, I realized that's why she was so sweet. And, and I always let her know, be, well, being a favorite grandson, I always let her know how much I loved her when I seen her. She was such a beautiful woman. You could see her working tirelessly in the church. And even with the inability to see, I remember coming down to New Jersey and still hearing her make her announcements, working for the church. I say that because many of us get a, a hangnail on our finger, we can't work for the church. And I say that because many of us have, have these little hiccups and we stop doing what we're supposed to do. But Grandma still got up and made it known that there was work to be done for the church. I, I want to salute her today. I want to salute her because there was, there was something powerful about her spirit that nothing held her back. Nothing stopped her. She was everywhere. She was at all the services, all the Passovers, all the assemblies because she wanted to still be a part of what was going on. I said, thank you, Grandma. Thank you, St. Louise Howard, for doing such a wonderful job. She, she loved everybody. She never had a negative word that I've ever heard her say about anybody. Now, I don't know what she might have said uh, 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 at home, 
dealing with anyone who wasn't her favorite grandson, but I'm just saying that I've never heard her say anything negative. She's always been a willing worker, and so for this, we must say, to God be the glory. Come on, open your mouth and say, to God be the glory for the things he has done. Even in this, we celebrate. We don't thank God for all things, but in all things, we give thanks. Thank you, God, for letting us know this woman of God. Thank you for letting her come into our lives. And we've experienced the kingdom of God through her life. Jesus says that there are some moments in time that people will never begin to experience or see the kingdom of God until they get to this point where they know how to love unconditionally. And I've seen St. Louise. I've seen the kingdom of God in her. You know, as I was coming here this morning, I was meditating on St. Luke, the 10th chapter. If I could just for a moment share this with you, and I want to encourage you with this, Elder Stewart. It says, it was talking about how Jesus had come into the house of Mary and Martha. And Martha had gotten busy doing work in the kitchen and cooking as it was custom of Jewish custom then to prepare for your guest that was coming into the house. And be that as it may, Mary should have been doing the same thing, but she wasn't. She was at the feet of Jesus, worshiping. And Martha got an attitude, if I could just talk in my vernacular. She got all upset. She started capping, talking about, look at Mary, Jesus. She ain't doing what she's supposed to. She's not following the custom and the tradition of our culture and of our religion. She should be in the kitchen helping me. And Jesus says... In the last verse of the 10th chapter of St. Luke. But one thing is needful. She says, Martha, don't be, don't be troubled by what Mary's doing. Don't be troubled by the many things that you're doing. There's only one thing that's needful. And Mary hath chosen the good part. Church, I just, I just shouted on that in my spirit as I was driving down thinking about St. Louise. That there's many things that she could have been doing in life, but she chose the good part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's many times we are busy running around and running in circles and it doesn't benefit nobody. We're busy running around and, and making all kind of noise and acting like we're doing so much and we've tired ourselves out but haven't done anything for anybody. But St. Louise, Jesus declares right here, says she chose the good part. And nothing shall be taken away from her. The Bible says that when we lay our loved ones to rest, their works do follow them. Yeah, right. She chose to serve the Lord with her whole heart. Yeah. Soul, mind, and should. She chose to celebrate God in her living. She chose to celebrate God in her singing. She uh -huh. chose to celebrate God in raising uh -huh. her children, her grandchildren, her nieces and nephews. St. Louise chose the good part, and that was to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. I love it because the second commandment says this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Who didn't call St. Louise Grandma Louise? Who didn't call her auntie? We loved her mother. We loved you. But we know that the Lord loves her best. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. And this morning we're here to celebrate a life well lived. Yes. Yes. She's raised a beautiful family. Yes. And for this we are grateful. Yes. We are going to move forward in the service. But I want you to know this morning that we're here to celebrate. Amen. And although there may be some tears that fall, those are a sign of love. Those tears Amen. that you shed are a sign of your love and your devotion for St. Louise, and it's all right. But I want us to also remember the good that she's done, the work that she's left behind for us to continue on with, and let's celebrate a life that the Lord is, I believe, well pleased. We'll have our Old Testament scripture reading now, coming from our Evangelist Daily, the pastor in Washington, D.C., to read for us the 39th chapter of Psalm. to the bereaved family, to the people of God, reading from Psalms number 39. I said, 
I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle, while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence, yes, and I held my peace, yes. even from good. And my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Yes, sir. Then spake I with my tongue. Lord, Lord. make me to know my, my name yes, and the measure of my days, well, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Yes, sir. Behold, thou hast made my days as in hand breath. And my age is as nothing yeah. before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity, Selah. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. Yes, sir. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. Yeah. And now, Lord, now, Lord. What wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the approach of the foolish. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. When thou with rebukest thou correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity sealer. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner. <laughs> As all my fathers were, mm -hmm. oh, spare me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and to the hearers likewise.
There are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. 
There is one glory of the sun and glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I know this part by heart because it was my granddad's favorite part. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. I'll say it again. Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Someone say amen. amen. What a powerful reading. That death hath no strength over the believer. That death has lost its power because Jesus is risen. Church, we've got something to celebrate. We're going to see Grandma Louise again. Because death is swallowed up in victory. This morning we've got something to celebrate about. I want to call our dear sister, Sister Seychelle Folson, yeah, who's going to sing for us this yeah, morning. Let's say amen. 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 amen.
Praise the Lord. I just like to extend my deepest condolences to the family again. You know, y'all are my family, and this was my girl. So this is a tough loss for all of us, but I'm praying with you, praying for you constantly. Um, and Quentin sends his love from Maryland. I've had some good days. And I've had some hills to climb. Yeah, yeah. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I
With all the rights she had to complain, we never heard her complain. Amen. She lived that song. She's had her good days. I wish she'd go along with me. She's had some bad days. Had mountains to climb, but she said, I will not complain. We went to visit her in the hospital, and she was still in good spirits. A little bit of pain, but she was still all right. We got to singing in there, and she was just waving her head back and forth. She was still saying, I won't complain. She's a testament to all of us this morning. I, I want to celebrate today. I, I feel like getting happy this morning. But she, she was a, a testimony that whatever we go through in life, we still should celebrate the Lord. Amen. We're going to have the condolences and cards read at this time. We know that there are many, but we're going to call Grand Leah, St. Adrian Bradshaw to come, and she will do her best to get through as many as she can at this time. Can we have a short song?
Shella Cox. Amen. We're so sorry for your loss. Our hearts reach out in deepest sympathy in the loss of one who meant so much to you. Daughters Auxiliary, Church of God and Saints of Christ, 109 Beer Street, New Haven, Connecticut. A prayer of sympathy and faith. May your faith comfort you, and may the Lord wrap you in his love and bring you peace. Elder J. Scott Barber and Saints, Church of God and Saints of Christ, 109 Beer Street, New Haven, Connecticut. Amen. May God, who sees your grieving heart and hears each tender prayer, be ever near to give you peace and keep you in his care. All right. He takes care of his people like a shepherd. Yes. He gathers them like lambs in his arms All right. and carries them close to him. Isaiah 40 and 11. With caring sympathy in your loss, St. Carmen, stop. Amen. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Psalms 145 and 18. As you walk through this time of loss, May you know that the Lord walks with you, and he will comfort you. Continuing to pray for you all, St. Susan Heard and Brother London Dorsey Heard. God is with you in the loss of your mother. May your memories help to ease the grief and loss you feel, because your mother's love remains eternal, deep, and real. Dear Gloria, though sadness lasts a while, when those we love depart. In time, the love of God will bring new peace to fill your heart. St. Barbara Barnett. <clears throat> We're thinking of you with sympathy. At times like this, it's hard to find the words that best convey the many thoughts of sympathy our hearts would like to say. But may it somehow help to know that through our words, that though our words are few, we're thinking of you warmly now and share this loss with you, sending you our deepest sympathy from the Seaford Tabernacle and Elder Robert D. Brown. Amen. Your mom was very special. Praying that even in your great loss, you'll feel surrounded by love. Many years worth of love from your wonderful mom and many prayers worth of love from the people near you who care about you and what you're going through. Bishop C.L. Hendricks and First Lady St. Sherry Hendricks. Amen. And there was another card that said the almost the same exact thing. Your mom was very special. And that was from Elder James Bradshaw and St. Right. Adrian Bradshaw. All right. All right. I have resolutions. Sister Leah, St. Louise Howard, United States Special Daughter. Whereas, we the members of the New Jersey Temple deeply mourn the loss of our dear mother, grandmother, sister, cousin, and fellow servant of God, Sister Leah, St. Louise Howard. We find solace and comfort in the assurance of her unwavering faith and a profound impact on our lives. Whereas St. Louise exemplified the virtues of courage, perseverance, and unwavering faith throughout her earthly journey, despite any obstacles encountered, demonstrating to us all the transformative power of faith in overcoming life's challenges. <coughs> Whereas we draw strength and inspiration from the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 10, which reads, Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. My mind, my mind. For we walk by faith, yes. not by sight. Amen. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted by him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good <coughs> or bad. Whereas St. Louise lived out these words in her daily life, making it her goal to please her maker through countless acts of caretaking love, encouragement to others, and through using her melodious alto voice in praise to her God. Amen. Amen. 
Therefore, be it resolved that we, the New, the New Jersey Temple family, affirm our commitment to honoring her memory by emulating her unwavering faith, resilience, and steadfast devotion to God. Be it further resolved that as we bid farewell to our dear St. Louise, we take comfort in knowing that she has been called to her eternal reward, yes. where she now dwells in the presence of the Lord, free from the confines of earthly suffering and yes. limitations, yes. and that one day we shall be reunited with her in the glorious presence of our Savior. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Lovingly submitted by Pastor Evangelist James A. Cook and Congregation of the New Jersey Temple. Amen. Amen. Church of God and Saints of Christ. Joshua Generation Resolution. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble, as they are soon gone and we fly away. Psalms 90 and 10. Whereas our dearly beloved United States special daughter, St. Louise Howard, a gracious, loving, helpful, thoughtful, and giving daughter of Jerusalem and sister of mercy, a servant of the Lord, a devoted pillar, and member of the Church of God and Saints of Christ, has been called from labor to reward. Whereas the membership of the Church of God and Saints of Christ, Joshua Generation, which is to place on record our heartfelt sympathy for such a great and powerful woman of God. St. Louise will be remembered for her hard work, yes. dedication, and wholehearted support to building God's kingdom, building up God's people, and building upon God's plan for her family, church family, and her community. Grandma Louise, as many affectionately called her, wanted to put her two cents in to move the work forward. Yes. It didn't matter to her how long the project would take. Mm -hmm. She just wanted to get it done. Yeah. Grandma Louise's two cents was just as it states in Proverbs 3, 15 through 18. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. Yes. And blessed we will always be as we remember St. Louise for her sweeter than sweet and stronger than strong alto voice. Yes. She was a singer, no doubt, throwing in her chords and holding up the alto section locally in Detroit, nationally at Passover and Assembly, and also in her beloved New Jersey Temple. Her voice resounded with power, strength, and intention. She sang to give God glory and honor. She sang to bless others. And she sang to the power of the Lord come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As the psalmist cried out in Psalms 59 and 16, but I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. St. Louise was a witness to that. Be it resolved that we thank God for blessing us to share in the journey of life of St. Louise Howard. Her presence will be greatly missed, but we will forever remember the example she lived before us. Her spirit has now returned to the Almighty God who gave it. Blessed are they that do his commands, Mama. that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city, Revelation 22 and 14. Go now, St. Louise, and sweep through the city. Yes. You're praising God in the highest. Make the heavenly arches ring. Take your rest. We will see you on the other side. Humbly submitted, Bishop C.L. Hendricks and the Joshua Generation Movement. Church of God and Saints of Christ, New Haven, Connecticut, 8 r 2023 resolution. And now behold, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high, Job 16 and 19. Whereas St. Louise Howard, a beautiful, dedicated, steadfast and passionate servant of the Lord and the, to the Church of God and Saints of Christ has been called from labor to reward. Whereas the membership of the Church of God and Saints of Christ, New Haven, Connecticut, wish to join in with the many saints and friends at the homegoing celebration of our beloved St. Louise and place on record our love, respect, 
and appreciation for a true daughter of Jerusalem and sister of mercy. St. Louise believed in the teachings and sayings of Prophet William Saunders Crowley and lived her life according to God's word. St. Louise was a willing worker in God's kingdom, always wanting to see the church grow. She had a simple elegance about herself and a smile that would melt your heart. We remember her for her melodious alto voice and her strong testimony of her faith in Jesus Christ. Be it resolved that we thank God for allowing us the great blessing of having St. Louise Howard in our lives. She will forever hold a place in our hearts and minds as she led by example in everything she said and did. <coughs> Sleep on St. Louise. Your heavenly home is ready to welcome you into the loving arms of Jesus. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Revelation 22, 14. Be it further resolved, that we believe St. Louise's salvation is sure, yes. according to her confession of faith, mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. 1 Amen. John 5 and 13. Amen. Humbly submitted, Chief Evangelist J.D.S. Wade. Amen. St. Janelle Wade, second. <coughs> All right. Daughters Auxiliary of the Church of God and Saints of Christ, right. Adar, March 21st, 2023. To the family of the late St. Louise Howard, United States Special Daughter. According to his tender mercy, God, in his infinite wisdom, has moved from our midst one of his jewels, our beloved sister in Christ. On behalf of the daughters of Jerusalem and sisters of mercy, I hereby send our heartfelt condolences to you at this time of the loss of United States Special Daughter, St. Louise Howard. As we celebrate the homegoing of our beloved, we understand that the work she completed was done while it was dead. Yet, wow. we yield to the creator wow. of us all, our Heavenly Father, who does all things just and right. When you lose a rare jewel, it saddens our hearts. But we rejoice because St. Louise lived a life in accordance with God's word. She performed Revelation 2 and 10, which reads in part, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In celebrating her life, we note the beautiful voice she had, the good times shared when I would visit with her and the late Sister Elder Stewart, right. her no-nonsense approach to life, yet loving, kind, and giving. No matter what the obstacle, St. Louise lived life to the fullest and was a true example of commitment and dependability. Let us remember the words of Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Family, it is my personal prayer that you all, along with the church family, be strengthened and encouraged while we mourn the loss of this soldier in God's army. While we have lost yet another jewel in this magnificent work, let your memories of her and the work she performed be remembered in our hearts forever. We all pray for your continued strength in the Lord. Thy servant in Christ, Sister Elder St. Lenore E. Culler, Grandmother Saint. Amen. The Auxiliary, United States Special Daughter, Church of God and Saints of Christ, St. Saint Louise Howard. Grandfather Abraham, Marcus Hammonds, Grandmother Sarah, St. Tiffany Court. Whereas God in his infinite wisdom called from labor to reward our beloved sister in Christ, St. Louise Howard, U.S. Special Daughter, who departed this life on March 14, 2024, after a courageous battle. Whereas St. Louise Howard exemplified the essence of a virtuous woman, embodying strength, grace, and unwavering faith throughout her earthly journey. Whereas, her life was a testament to the enduring power of faith as she lived according to the guiding principles of 2 Timothy 4 and 7. I have fought the good fight. Mm -hmm. I have finished the race. Yeah. I have kept the faith. Whereas St. Yes. Louise embraced every challenge with resilience, facing adversity with the spirit fortified by the promises of God's word. Whereas, her unwavering commitment 
to her faith served as a beacon of hope and inspiration to all who had the privilege of knowing her. Therefore, be it resolved that while we mourn the loss of our St. Louise, we celebrate the indelible impact she made on our lives all right. and the legacy of faith she leaves behind. Well. Be it further resolved that we draw comfort from the assurance that St. Louise has now received the crown of righteousness promised to all who love the Lord. My mind. Be it finally resolved that we commit to honoring her memory by continuing to live out our faith with the same steadfastness and courage she exemplified until we too, like her, can declare, I have fought the good fight. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. finished the race. I have kept the faith. Respectfully submitted, Evangelist Marcus Hammond's grandfather Abraham and St. Tiffany Cook, grandmother Sarah, Amen. the National Auxiliary Church of God and Saints of Christ, Joshua Generation. Amen. There are more resolutions and um, in the essence of time, um, I think I dropped a few of them, but we would like to thank everyone for the resolutions and cards that were submitted on behalf of our dear daughter, St. Louise Howard. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful reading of those beautiful cards and resolutions. At this time, we want to, we want to take a moment to before we bring up the daughter of the glorious Stuart, who is going to sing for us. I want to take a moment to celebrate her. Amen. 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 And the work she has done in taking care of St. Louis. An arduous task, but she did it. Come on, I said she did it. She she stuck by her mother's side. I can remember seeing her day and night calling on the phone. I'm at my mother's. And she, she has been faithful. Amen. The Bible says to honor your father and mother. That your days will be long upon the land. I know that the Lord has a blessing waiting for her because there are some things that God will put in our way just to test us, to see if we're fit for the journey. And you've been faithful, Elder. You've been faithful standing by your mother's side, rearing her, mending her, nurturing her. And so we want to thank you for being a jewel to this gem. Amen for being a daughter that she could depend on That's right. That's right. in times of need. You know, someone said uh, this quote, this famous song, a friend in need is a friend indeed. And I always had it backwards. I always thought that if I was in need, then that meant I was a good friend. But no, when you've been a friend to me when I was in need, and sister and elder, you've been a daughter. You've been a confidant. You've been a friend. You've been a comfort. You've been a nurse. You've been a counselor. You've been a guide. But most of all, you've just been Christ. We see Christ in you today. The love that you've shown to Lord, your mother. In those moments that only you have in your heart, I want you to hold on to them. No one else has your testimony. I wish somebody would talk in here. <laughs> Until you have to walk in her shoes. I can understand why you're quiet, but no one has your testimony. No one will be able to tell your story of those late nights, of those sleepless nights, that that prayer pillow is worn out because you've been praying for your mother. I want to say to you, job well done. I know it wasn't easy, but job well done. And I dare not overlook you today. I know we're celebrating Grandma, but I, I will not overlook you for all that you've done and the rest of the extended family. But I just want to celebrate you because I know 
and as we've talked, the things that you have been through and the things that you've been committing yourself to for the sake of someone else. And I want to tell you, all the jumping around and shouting we do is good, but that's not serving God. All the songs you sing and all the uniform you wear, and that's not serving God. We serve God when we serve others. And by this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you have love one for another. All the hats we wear don't mean a thing unless you're serving somebody. So I want to celebrate you today. Because it don't matter all the colors you don't wear. It don't matter the titles you wear. What matters is did you, did you serve somebody? If I can help someone along my way, <laughs> then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living will not be a facade. I'm not just walking around talking about it, but glory to you lived it. And so you have the right to cry on today. You have the right to cry. You have the right to smile and laugh. Matter of fact, you have the right to take over this service and we don't say another thing because you live this thing. When I was home in my bed enjoying my TV show, Gloria was at the hospital. When I was taking trips to the park and watching the baseball game, Gloria was at the hospital. She was doing doctor's visits when you were going to prom dates and when you were going to wedding receptions. Gloria was mending Grandma Louise. And so I have no nothing else to say, but come on, Elder Gloria. Come on, Elder Stewart. And bring your tribute, your song, your words, whatever you choose to do at this hour. And celebrate mom at this time. Oh, but they just don't. 
They just don't understand In my life There's been a change And I'm hoping for A better life I have a building Lord Way
you, Lord. to our eulogists. Right. We, do, we definitely want to acknowledge and give opportunity to some of the clergy that have come. Amen. I want to first ask if Elder Woodbury would come All right. and give remarks Amen. to this family Amen. and to the church at this time, all the way from Detroit, Michigan. Amen. 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 Yes, yes, Spoke of the Georgia Peach. All right. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But she was uh, <laughs> matured in Detroit. Oh, yeah. And sweet. Yeah. Later on, season in Newark. All right, all right, all right. So I want to say that uh, St. Louise, uh, we uh, come up and uh, had an opportunity to sit on uh, sit on mm -hmm. and she. Uh, and we develop a friendship on yeah. And St. Louise is my sister. Yeah. 
became my friend also. All right. And uh, based on nothing but love, uh, independent love, but just still by itself, regardless of whatever conflicts we might experience. I was uh, still her brother. All right. And still her friend. Yeah. And so I'm grateful for all the time that God has blessed us. Here, yeah. and together we're the I got, I got the call that the, the Lord called, her, and I was feeling a certain kind of way because she didn't wait on me. But uh, when I began to think about it, you know, that it, it, it was all right for her to go because she had, had an assurance. Yes, sir. Ah, yes, sir. She, she'll keep living. Yeah. After she passed. Yes, sir. I want to say, God bless your family. Yes, sir. And uh, we'll keep you in the prayers. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Woodbury, all the way from the Court of Michigan, for those kind words. This time I'd like to have short remarks coming from our pastor in Seaford, Delaware, Elder Robert. Give an honor to God, and to the family, the bishop, the elders, the evangelists. In the beginning, God made heaven and earth. Then he made man. And he breathed into him the breath of life. And he became a living soul. All right. Down through the ages, he breathed the breath of life into St. Louis. All right, all right. And before she was formed in the belly. Go ahead, Don. He ordained her. To be a saint of God and to carry his light. And that she did. And see, she, her light touched her daughter. And then her daughter touched her sons. And they formed a prayer line in honor of the church, six o'clock in the morning. And for now, close to two decades, that prayer line is still going. Her light is touching thousands of people. I have the privilege of running that, that prayer line right now. And as we were coming up the road, we talked about the fact that because of her light, this prayer line is able to touch thousands of people. People that don't belong to this church. People that don't belong to some of no church. We had one person get on the phone and said, this is the only church they have. And that person was from St. Louis, Missouri. Wow. Had another one from Kansas. So that light is being shined. You talking about, I'll keep on living. Yeah. Hey! Her, she's going to keep on living yeah. after she dies because of the light that she has shown and touched everyone. She's an example. Yeah. She's an example. She didn't have really no favorites. She didn't have no this side, that side, Baptist or, or AME. Or, she lived for God. And yeah. she touched their lives and she carried herself as a Christian. And I thank God for her life because she will keep on living because of the life she lived. Amen. God bless the family. Amen. We're all praying for you. Amen. And don't you know there are hundreds of people praying for you you've never seen before. Yeah. But they love you. Yeah. And they thank you 
for doing the work that you did. God bless you. Thank you for those kind words, Elder Brown. I'd like now to bring one of the princes of the church to give remarks and words to this bereaved family, Bishop Frank G. Henson at this time. Would you come, Bishop Henson? Chief Executive Officer, our Senior Bishop, Amen. Bishop C.L. Hendricks from Cleveland, Ohio. Would you please receive him?
Amen. Amen. Green family, my beloved daughter, mother, grandma, sister, friend, and jewel of the Church of God and Saints of Christ, St. Louise Howard. We send words of comfort. My assignment here for this moment is just to give comforting words to this family. St. Louise was a gift to us that we have shared for many years. And as we listen to the words of her life, they have been like a life worth living and worth celebrating. We're in today this juxtaposition. Uh, we we want to be happy, um, but we want to be sad. We want to cry, but then we want to laugh. We, we want to run, but then we want to walk. We're in this juxtaposition of our feelings. And I want to just leave you with this quote. Our talent is God's gift to us. What we do with our gift is back, what we give back to God that gave us our talent. St. Louise understood her talent. She was loved by her family. She was loved by her church family. She loved to sing. And in the reading of her obituary, it says she sang with the Dixie Hummingbirds. And St. Louise understood a thing about moving. She knew a thing about moving day. I read where she lived in Georgia. Then she lived in Michigan. Then she moved to New Jersey. And as speaking to the family, uh, she was under the understanding that she had another moving date. She, she told her daughter, I'm moving to a room upstairs. The, uh, Elder Stewart was wondering what room was being prepared upstairs. The, the room wasn't ready yet, so, so they obliged St. Louis. Because she can be persuasive, can she not? So, so they moved St. Louise to another room because the room upstairs wasn't ready for her yet in that hospital. But she realized in John 14, 1 that says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. One translation says mansions as rooms. There's many rooms there, and St. Louise had a moving date. And she was moving upstairs to the mansion up in glory. Be comforted, family. Because we don't feel troubled. We don't feel discouraged. We, we don't feel despondent because there was a promise placed for St. Louise. There was a prepared place for St. Louise. My, my. And that prepared and promised place was in the presence of God. Be comforted family that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot be. I want to take a moment to acknowledge all of the clergy and ministers that are here. Amen. I'm going to start to my right. We have Vanish John Marshall. Yes, sir. He's in our midst. Thank you for being here with us, Marshall. And then we have Vanish Oliver Daly. Yes, sir. We've heard from Elder Woodbury. And we've heard from Elder Robert Brown. We also have Elder Aaron Carr, Amen. grandson. We also have Elder Daniel Baskin. Amen. Here. Michael Harris, we have Evangelist at Large, Isaac Artis, who has come in. Happy to see him. If there be any other clergy that I've missed, I want to charge it to my head and not my heart, but we're thankful for your presence here on today. Amen. We're going to move into the reading of the obituary from the great granddaughter, St. Judah Cook. After the reading of the obituary, we will have a short stanza of one of Grandma Louise's favorite songs, King Emmanuel. And then the next voice you will hear after the song will be that of her grandson and her pastor, the evangelist James Cook. 
who will speak the final words Amen. over this dear soul. Amen.
to my beloved family, dear friends, and all who have gathered here today, yes, sir. both in person and virtually, to honor and celebrate the remarkable life of my grandmother, St. Louise Howard. Yes. Amen. I extend my heartfelt gratitude. Your presence here is a source of comfort mm -hmm. and strength mm -hmm. during this time of both mourning and celebration. Yes, sir. To each friend and well-wisher, your support and kindness are deeply appreciated. Yeah. To every minister and clergy member in attendance, your spiritual guidance and presence uplift our hearts. All right. Your virtual presence is felt and cherished by those joining us through the digital spheres of YouTube and Facebook. All right. I want to express my profound gratitude to all who have traveled near and far to pay tribute to my grandmother Louise yes. out. Yes, Your presence means the world to me, to my Uncle David, to my mom, Elder Gloria Stewart, to my Aunt Ella, to my siblings, to my niece, nephews, and cousins. We gather to honor a life that has touched us deeply, share memories, and find strength in each other's company. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for being here. Oh, yeah. May we find peace yes, and sir. comfort in our collective memories and that love that binds us. Yes. My grandma, yeah. Louise Howard. Can I take my time? Take your time. I, I remember many things while growing up in my hometown, Detroit, Michigan. Wow. Wow. Right. Right. Mm. For my grandmother and, and, and my mom, we, we, we lived on the same block of Lawrence Street. Yeah. Wow. And we lived around the corner where she lived on Calvert. I, I also lived so close. We lived in close proximity. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, Laura, I remember the countless times grandma would send me to the store when I was about seven years old yeah, yeah. to get a case of Coca-Cola. Uh -huh. That was too heavy for a seven-year-old to get. So true. I'm not talking about yes, the, the bottle Coca-Cola, but the gap glass Coca-Cola. Yes, yes, uh, she would say, Boosie, yes. I need you to go to the store uh -huh. and to get me some pop. Yes, sir. I don't think you generally know about pop. Talk about soda. Talk about Jersey. Uh -huh. In Detroit, they call it pop. Uh -huh. And others call it pop. Uh, in Detroit, I can remember all the times we had around each other. And of course, my, my grandmother always gave me exact change. Uh -huh. <laughs> if, if something costs $3.37, she wouldn't give me a $5 bill. She would give me three single dollars. One quarter, one dime, two pennies. Yes, sir! I know her. I don't recall my grandmother ever saying keep the chain. She had a budget and she managed her pocketbook to the teeth. She knew her means. Uncle David. I remember my grandmother driving in that long Cadillac style car named Big Red. With the hot leather seats oh, that will burn your legs in the summertime. I can go on and on and on. But with my grandmother, St. Louise, transitioned to New Jersey under the care 
of my mother, Elder Gloria Stewart. Yeah. I didn't realize how much I needed her. <laughs> especially in my ministry. I needed her wisdom. I needed her understanding. I needed her patience. And I needed her prayers. She often said, I never knew God would make my grandson my pastor. My Lord. And she said it with pride everywhere she went. My grandmother was my special daughter, where she supported my pastoral needs. Let's be honest, preachers, one of the prayers that pastors pray is for God to send labor. Send the help. God sent my grandmother. Yes, sir. Even with her disability of blindness, yeah. she never made an excuse yeah. to support me. Yeah. And she always respect, gave me respect yeah. as her pastor. Yes, I call members like my grandmother the post office saints. Because when rain or shine, they'll be in the house. I hear you, General. Conversations we had when I would take her back and forth to the doctor's office, back and forth to church services, yes, sir. or travel out of town to our national yes, gatherings, yes, such yes, as the Memorial Feast of the yes, Lord's Passover. Yes, sir. I will miss the times I will touch her foot to test her ability to know who touched her. My Lord. Ah. She always knew <laughs> it was me. My, 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 my. my grandmother was not rich. Yeah. She was not wealthy my Lord. by earthly standards. Come on, come on. But she was rich with the love of God yeah. towards her family, yeah. towards her friends, yeah. and her church. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest. This is rough. Man. And I'm in process of mourning like many of you. But I want to encourage you today with the words of scripture that my grandmother lived by. And it's found in John 14, verse 1 through 6, where Jesus confronts it, where he, he comforted his disciples yes, by yes, saying, Let not your heart, your heart yes, be troubled. Yes, you believe in God. Yes. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. Yes, sir. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Yes, yes, sir. That where I am, yes, sir. there ye may be also. Yes, sir. And whither I go, ye know. Yes, sir. And ye and the way ye know. Yes. Thomas said unto him, yes, Lord, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. Yes. And how can we know the way? Yes. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Yes. The truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, a question. Are you covered? Can you touch your neighbor next to him and ask him a question? Are you covered? Do you have an insurance plan? No matter our background, our belief, our status, we're all are going to go on the journey towards this terminal illness called mortality. All right. It's a guarantee, Bishop. We, we all have an appointment. It doesn't matter whether you are Jew. It doesn't matter whether you are Christian. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you are Muslim. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you are Jehovah Witness yeah. or any other faith. 
It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican. It doesn't matter if you're independent. It doesn't matter whether you are black. It doesn't matter if you are white or yellow or brown. It doesn't matter if you are an atheist or any particular group. It doesn't matter where you work, what you wear, or what connection you may think you have. Whether rich or poor, powerful or humble, death comes to us all. As we mourn and celebrate my grandmother passing, we are reminded of the importance of being covered by the right insurance. I'm not talking about Medicaid. I'm not talking about Medicare. I'm not talking about Aetna. I'm not talking about Blue Cross and Blue Shields. The assurance of my grandmother's souls was found in Jesus Christ. If you know anything about insurance, it will cost you dearly. There's a high expense of not having the right insurance. Can you touch your neighbor next to you and say, are you covered? Are you covered? Friends and family, you will face uncertainties. You will face some challenges. Just as we ensure our physical well-being with insurance policy, we must consider our spiritual insurance. Grandma Louise understood this truth deeply, recognizing that not having the right insurance or no insurance can cost all of us dearly. She trusted that Jesus Christ was her savior, knowing alone he could provide the security and peace she needed. In John 14, 1 through 6, Jesus assures his disciples of the eternal security he offered those who believe in him. He promised to prepare a place for us in his father's house where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow. Are you covered? Are you covered by the challenges of sin, guilt, and separation from God? When you genuinely have Jesus, he will protect you. He covers us in times of doubt, in times of fear, in times of spiritual emptiness, providing us with the assurance of forgiveness, redemption, and eternal life. With Jesus as our insurance, we can find refuge and strength in the face of life's trials, knowing he is with us, guiding us, protecting us every step of the way. Just as insurance policies vary in coverage, Jesus offered comprehensive coverage for every aspect of our lives. Come on, can you touch your neighbor next to you and ask him a question. Are you covered today? Are you covered? Despite facing physical blindness, she had a spiritual vision. Seeing the promise of God, Grandma walked by faith and not by sight. My grandmother on her deathbed had a conversation with my Aunt Ella and my mom one particular night as well as me and she began to give out her blessing towards her family. She told us that she was proud of us. She told us 
what a good daughter you was, mom, and what a good daughter you were, Aunt Ella. She told us that she loved us. She understood that her room upstairs, Bishop, was being prepared by her Savior, who promised to welcome her into his presence for eternity. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Touch your neighbor again and ask him, are you covered? Come, come on. Just ask. Lacking in short can result in significant financial loss. Lacking assurance in Jesus Christ can result in spiritual loss and separation from God. Louise understood the urgency of securing her eternal insurance and decided to follow Christ. She knew that without him, she would be vulnerable to the consequences of sin and eternal separation from God. She knew that without him, she could do nothing. She knew that without him, she would fail. She knew that without him, her life would be nothing like a ship without a sail. Are you covered? I said, are you covered? She died well, y'all. I said she died well. I know she suffered much pain. I know she went through numerous surgeries. I know she lost a lot of weight. But my grandmother died well because she was covered by Jesus. You see, you see, when you know how to die, we have the freedom to live. We don't know how to die. You can face tomorrow. I said you can face tomorrow. Having eternal matters settled allows us to live life on earth more fully. If my grandmother was here, she would say, I might not have my physical eye, but baby, I got my spiritual eyes. If a grandmother was here, she would testify that she wanted to be the child that God is calling for in those last and evil days. If a grandmother was here, she would begin to march the victory. If a grandmother was here, she would say, although he slayed me, yet will I trust him. If a grandmother was here, I can hear her sing from her spirit. Get right, church, and let's go home. I got a particular part in the song. She said, midnight train may be too late. Get right, church, and let's go home. If my grandmother was here, she will sing, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, that solid rock I stand. All on the ground are seeking sand. Do I have a witness in here? If my grandmother was here, she would say, with peace, like a river, attend unto my ways. With sorrows, like sea billows rose. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, 
It is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. What's going on, Grandmama? I'll see you in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Can we give God a praise for the life of Louise Howard? If she meant anything to her, give God a praise. Open your mouth and thank the King of Kings and the Lord. Are you covered? Come on, are you covered? Don't fool me now. Are you covered? Open your mouth and say, Glory! Glory, Glory to the King! Glory. Thank God St. Louise was covered. She was covered this morning. Covered by the best. Hallelujah. 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 Bless you, Evangelist Cook. Hallelujah call for the undertakers at this time. Hallelujah. It's all right to worship. It's all right to say thank you, Jesus. It's all right to give him glory in this place. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank God I can learn how to live because I'm covered this morning. We're covered through the blood of Jesus Christ. It is his blood that cleanses Lord. Thank you, God. As the choir begins to sing something softly, we will be under the direction of our deacons who will begin to usher our friends and family around for our final view. We would ask at this moment that as you view and exit the church you may receive what family has prepared for you in the vestibule and right into your cars as we do have a journey to reach the final resting place of St. Louise Howard do not go downstairs if at all possible please receive what they have for you at the door and go to your cars as our caretakers will be ready to usher us to the final resting place of St. Louis Howard. Amen. Amen. Mother Parsons.
into the shadows and continueth not. For we have brought nothing into this world and is certain we shall carry nothing out. Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord giveth and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For as much it has pleased the almighty God to take out of this life, our beloved sister, St. Louise Howard. We therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for that general resurrection in the life to come, in the last day, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shall return for the second time without sin unto salvation. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Yea, henceforth, says the spirit, they do rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. Glory, and the glory forever forever amen amen jude 1 24 and 25 now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever amen, amen. amen. peace be unto thee